Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our Republic of Ireland All Time Eleven, and this time we are now on to our left wingers. The team so far is Shea Given in goal, Gary Kelly at right back, Dunham McGrath in centre back, and Dennis Irwin at left back, and Ray Howden at right mid. So now we're on to our left midfield, and our list is um, Damien Duff, who you know. I think a lot of people will have him as, as their favourite. Kevin Sheedy, another great player for, from the early 80s and 90s. Kevin Kilban, a great servant. I think he just deserves a mention here. Mm-hmm. Um, still a, a very iconic figure in Irish football in and around. Even, you know, the fact that he does the broadcast and stuff like that as well. He's still very much within the Irish game uh, and not forgetting about to his credit. Steve Hoyway, who I know you had a big case for. Uh, Gary, Tony Galvin, Tommy Eglinton. Uh, and I know a lot of people that are gonna look for James McLean in the in the in the comments there, younger audience who probably didn't get to appreciate how good the the other players ahead of McLean mm-hmm. actually are. Uh, Robbie Brady probably deserves a mention on that list as well. Um, for what he's done, you know, the goal against France, the game in Lille, um, yeah. and did he did he score against Bosnia as well? So he got the goal in Bosnia yeah, and the so first leg of the playoff. He's, yeah. he's scored yeah, yeah. some important goals yeah. too. To be fair to him. Um, so. Don't want to overlook him either. So I think on that, I think that's probably the best of the of the lot. If we are forgetting someone, let us know in the comments. Um, but uh, Gary, over over to you uh, on that kind of list. Who excites you? Okay, well, a lot of them excite me. I mean, Duffer obviously a hundred caps. He was magical in the two thousand and two World Cup, albeit up front as opposed to on the left wing, but um great player. Um Kevin Sheedy did a crucial job for Jack Charlton, scored our first ever goal in the World Cup, an iconic goal against England. Um Steve Highway was a was an absolutely class player in the seventies. Um a brilliant player with Liverpool. They still sing about him in the seventies, won the European Cup. I don't know how many leagues he won. Probably, maybe if I'm being a bit harsh, um, maybe not as good in green as he was in red. Um, 34 caps, never actually scored for us, um, but he was an absolutely class player and probably achieved more in, in club football than mm. than any of the others. Um, Tony Galvin, a, a big favourite of Jack's, and we we actually missed him. And I know Kevin Sheedy replaced him, but we... He was a very different player to Kevin Sheedy in that he gave us an outlet. He held up the ball. He was a, a true winger. He could beat people and he could deliver a, a very good cross. Um, worth to mention, a, a crucial player in Euro 88 and probably injury cost him after that. And, and I'd like to mention someone from the, the, the past in Tommy Eglinton. Again, one back from my dad's time in the 40s and 50s. But uh, again, a, a superstar with Everton and uh, a crucial player. Uh, 24 caps and two goals back in the days when 24 caps really meant something mm-hmm. um it, it's a it's a re it's a really tough call i think we're going to have a lot of disagreement here um <laughs> I'd, I'd probably give my vote to to damien duff i suppose in the end but uh, i can see a lot of arguments for for a lot of others yeah mm-hmm. so. peter um who on that list excites you and kind of who's in your thoughts yeah, I'd, I'd be quite sing, single-minded on this one, that it'd, it'd have to be tougher for me. Um, I think it's just such a, a great servant over the years, exactly 100 caps. Um, I think as well, kind of his career, because we first saw him with the U teams, with Brian Kerr and all, he, all, all you knew about him even before he, he wore the senior jersey, you know. He was kind of really looking out for him to come through in England with Blackburn at the time. and He's one of the most exciting players in the Premier League when he, when he burst through. Like, really old-fashioned wingers. Most wingers now... If you're left-footed, you play in the right and vice versa. He was kind of really go down on the outside and get his crosses in. I love the way he always looked completely bollocks even after a few minutes of the game. You know what I mean? And he was just so so good at running at the, running with the ball. He actually got into the UEFA uh, team of the year in two thousand and two. He was he was probably our best player at the World Cup in two thousand and two, mm. playing playing as a striker actually. But it was just you know kind of simple tactics from Mick. You know. There are two best players, him and Robbie Keane, get the ball up to them and Damien just run at them and, and it did well. But then just a, a brilliant club career as well. I'm a Man United fan. I was really disappointed he went to Chelsea instead of Man United at mm. the time. I wanted him to come. Did really well there, well there. won a couple of Premier Leagues as well. Mm. And um, yeah, just so many of the 
so many of our big performances over the course of about a decade, he was so key to them. Maybe it was Robbie getting the goals, but you know, Damien was knocking on the door for the whole game. Uh, he he was yeah. For me, he's he's the best Irish left, a, a winger, not necessarily midfielder I I've ever seen, and I I'd have him in my in my team all day long, lads. Well, yeah, I think so. I think with Damien, um. He just was naturally talented. I think he was one of those few Irish footballers that we've had that just was born with natural skills. He could dribble uh, at players and just put fear into them. He developed his speed. I think I think it was really key for him to leave Blackburn. I don't think he was the sort of player who wanted to, to go onto the big stage. I don't think his personality had that in him. And I think he reached a new level then when he did go to Chelsea and he was successful and he was playing with some of the best players in the world in the Champions League. I think that really helped Ireland as well. Um, and I think he got the best out of the talents he had. And I think he was, yeah, as you said, he was in the European team and, and stuff like this. So I think for the caps he had coming through the age groups that he did in the youth system and becoming along with Robbie, I think, of that era. And when you think of that era of 2002, you probably think of them as our, our two focal points, the two best players in the side, obviously with Roy there as well. But um, again, Duff was understated. Um, you know, I know from talking to a couple of the players, they'd never, I think that they'd, they'd never have seen anybody who slept as much. Apparently yeah. he used to just arrive, you know, 30 seconds before the bus left for training, next and breakfast into him, onto the bus, Back after the training session, go upstairs, go to bed, come down for dinner, play pool for half an hour and then go to bed again. <laughs> so it's just amazing that, you know, you have a personality like that, all all different shapes and sizes in a side. But yeah, I just think, he, and he was great to watch. He was, you know, one of those exciting players with class. And I think we would kill for a player like Damien Duff at the minute. Yeah, I think when it, it, it was a case when whenever Robbie Keane was missing out of a game, your go-to man... For a lot, a large period of that time was Damien Duff. You, he was the person that you'd look to, to create that magic moment or score that goal. I remember we were in like a qualifying group with Russia, and I think he scored a goal against Russia at Lansdowne. And I, I'm not sure where Robbie Keane was that day, but we had no one else to go to, and Duff was just tormenting him the whole time, mm. the whole time, and and uh, that was a really good Rus- Russian side as well at the time. And I think as well what 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 you said just. In relation to Duff and, and his positioning, and I think Gary, you mentioned as well about two thousand and two. You know, he was basically playing as I say striker, maybe not an out striker, but somebody who could move around and kind of create things for you off your front man. But he also gave us that option. Uh, yeah. We were talking about Roy, uh, Ray Houghton being a bit versatile and stuff like that. Damien as well for being an out and out left winger, he could also fulfil that role for you up front if you needed to, which. You know, I suppose when you don't have a, a huge squad, maybe that we didn't have in in two thousand and two, that that was it was crucial for us as well. Yeah, well, it also causes him playing up top, but allowed Kilban to play ultimately mm-hmm. on the left, and he got he seemed to benefit a lot from that. He got how many caps has he got? Over a hundred. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, something, something. Well, yeah, yeah, we well yeah. over a hundred anyway. Yeah. And you, you know, so yeah. in fairness, I think <laughs> Kilban, you have to pay a bit of testament to. The career he had for Ireland, you know, he he turned up to every game. You know, oh, he yeah. he continued on, went further back to left back then to prolong his Irish career. You know, um, and wasn't played wasn't, central midfield as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah. he, he was a utility man, but yeah. he wouldn't get into my all time eleven. But I do think he deserves a, a good mention because he was a great yeah. servant. Uh, Sh- Sheedy you- as well for me. Um, family friend, so I, I have to make some sort of argument for him <laughs> as well. You know. Uh, <laughs> Stuff he won, obviously the the he played in the World Cup, scored our first ever goal as well. So I do, do think he deserves a, a huge mention. But when I started kind of coming into football, Damien Duff was probably my favourite player in the Irish team. Um, and you speak about performances as well that kind of stand out. And we spoke about Paul McGrath versus Italy or whatever. I know we lost the game to Spain, but he tormented Spain that whole game. That was a very, very good side. Um, Spanish sides and he awesome. tormented them you know we were unlucky yeah. not to win that game uh, if Ian Hart scores a penalty yeah. went through you know um, it is what it is but as I say I, you said he was playing striker that day and he tormented the team you know yeah. so and ultimately Robbie was the hero because he scored the penalty but Damien off the back of that then you know got the was it he missed the Chelsea that year or the year after 
but he was really making a name for himself and people then looked at him and go, this fella is actually world class. Yeah. And he, he was world class. And I don't care if people are going to argue with me or, or in the comments or that. He was a world class player. You don't get into that Chelsea team competing yeah, with no, uh, Aaron Robin and so yeah. on. Look at the career he went on to have, you Absolutely. know. Um, Mourinho obviously liked him, but I don't think he could fit them both in at that time. Uh, eventually, he, he went on a left. But I remember... And you probably remember more so being a Chelsea fan is uh, he played a game against Barcelona didn't he score as well? Yeah, round, round himself and Robin just completely destroyed them in the first half an hour. It was an incredible performance. The two of them, two left footers, two out and out left wingers. You kind of think, how do you put them into a team and make it work? And they found a way, and it was devastating. And all you have to do is ask the Barcelona defence about facing Damien Duff yeah. and Arjen Robin. Scary yeah. stuff. So I think uh, is it clean sweep then again with with Duffer? Um, I so, yeah. I just I'm I'm a little bit upset that probably I didn't get to see Sheedy more. Um, I, is he um? Can't, uh, yeah, he's can't choose when you're born. He, he's <laughs> definitely in the argument. I I I didn't actually think we'd get a clean sweep. Um, uh, Kevin Sheedy is definitely in the argument. Um. Maybe if Tony Galvin hadn't got injured, he might have been in it as well. And it might have Liverpool fans screaming for Stevie Highway because... Yeah. But uh, again, it's, but it's, like mean, the thing, yeah. You know, it's like that thing where people are, you know, screaming a thing at the screen or whatever. But at the same time, we're going off what they did in an Irish shirt, not what they've done in the yeah, exactly. okay. like, like, club. And level. also exactly. as well, yeah. when we were talking about positions, like, we were, you know, was there an argument for, for Liam Brady playing out on the left and stuff like that? But we're trying to pick players in their best positions rather than kind of accommodate a great player into a side, which that's kind of a bit of shoehorning, isn't it? There's an argument for that. Give us the arguments as well. If you think well, Brady I, I, should have been out on the left. Yeah, or... I, I certainly, and I, I actually didn't agree with the argument at the time and I still wouldn't. I, I could maybe make it now for Brady at his best. There was a strong argument and Jack got a lot of criticism in 1990 for actually playing Sheedy and not playing Liam Brady on the left. I would not have picked the Liam Brady of 1990 in that World Cup squad. I actually agree with Jack. The Liam Brady of four or five years earlier, um, I think there's a strong argument. We'll come on to this in the central midfield. He was playing in Serie A, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, I, mean, he was, I mean, he's a central midfield player, but there's a strong argument for playing him on the left. And that Liam Brady probably would have been in our World Cup team in 1990. Unfortunately... There was injuries and Father Time, I think, had caught up with Liam at that stage. But, yeah, yeah I mean, you could make the same argument. Uh, we can come on to that with central midfielders to play somebody on the right as well. But mm. it, we are talking about picking players in their, in their best positions. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah. I think that's it's a clean sweep. I, I mean, I, I, I struggle to see anyone else's kind of argument being made for this position. I think Duffer is just... Well, that's the thing, because even if you're talking about Liam Brady... If you have Liam Brady against Duff, Liam Brady was a centre midfielder. Is he as good as Damien Duff on the left? No, probably not. Yeah, and in a different role, I suppose. Yeah, completely I mean, different role. Again, I mean, again, yeah, determines totally the different. opposition, determines who's yeah. behind you on the left hand side. So, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Duff. Clean, clean sweep for Duff then. So uh, I mean, yeah. we have the makings of a really good good uh, team. I'm looking forward to getting into the centre mids now. So um, as I say, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, were we wrong? All right to pick Damien Duff and who would you have? Let us know your thoughts in the comments as always. Don't forget to drop a like on the video and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll speak to you soon.